five minutes. Your awareness may be powerful enough to control your instincts. Your instinct will be to remove your hand from the box. It's your girl Mish, and welcome to another episode of the Love Mish Podcast. Welcome to another episode of Love Niche Podcast. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about self-trust. But before we get into the episode, if this is your first time listening, welcome to Love Niche Podcast. I hope there's something within this episode that resonates with you. And if you're joining once again, hey love and welcome back. So you know how we do before we start the podcast, we like to go over our records. So... Well, actually, for this particular podcast, you can go to, you can actually review my self-love playlist on YouTube. Um, sometimes, like if it's, if it's conscious related, it'll probably be like one big ass folder that you got to scroll through. But self-trust is in its own category, which is under my relationship page. So that link is going to talk all about self-trust. Consciousness is just too much to group them. I'll be having categories for days. Um, So yeah, I just wanted to start out. That's the podcast link. In the background, let me give these people credit. We are listening to Fantasy Village Music and Ambience. Um... This is from The Vault of Ambience. I did not create the music. You know, I'm just playing it from the YouTube. I don't own any copyrights. And I have disclaimer in the link. I don't know. Spotify be coming out with new little updates and stuff. So look, I'm just trying to... <laughs> don't pull the shit down, okay? Don't pull the shit down. Um... For the local business record, I want to shameless plug, shout out myself. Um, I am going to make a trip to Michael's to buy two more, um, what do you call these sketchbooks, right? But I journal in them because I need one for, to actually plan out my business details. And I need one for my emotional journal. Because I have like a spirit guide, self-development journal going on. But I want that one to strictly be about emotions. And I have a shadow work, which is usually the darker emotions. But I have, I want to have a book. It's like if I'm feeling sad, I can write about it. If I'm feeling happy, I can write. I want a book just dedicated for emotions. I can put all my research and stuff in there. You know what hit me? I'm going to do all these journals for myself, right? I'm going to turn around and freaking make books. I'm like, okay, universe, I, I see where we're going with this. So I'm literally, I'm literally writing my books already. And all I have to go back and do is type or talk to text and boom, start publishing them. So yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. But um, let me see. So shameless plug, I'm going to shout out myself for this. Uh, podcast local business reco you guys i completed my baby does oracle card booklet right and i decided to upload it to my mommy and me youtube youtube page the mommy and me youtube page and i'll spin the wheel and it's in my link tree. You can actually go see the spinner wheel in my link tree. I'm editing the pages as I go. But once it's done, I'll be able to send that out. So I'm doing one picture a day. And as I do the picture, I'm editing the page. So it's going to be about 78 days 
until that's done or however many I end up doing. So far, I've been doing just one a day. But um, I'm so happy that I have that done. That was something that I wanted to do. It was something on my heart. You know, I finished it. It's like, yay, you know, now it's out in the world. I share it with people. It may inspire someone. And I don't know. That's just like a really good feeling. Like a lot of times when I click on YouTube videos, you know, I'm really going through something. I'm looking for answers. And it's just, it's just such a good feeling that someone you know, maybe overcame something and shared it with you or was going through something. And in spite of what they're going through, they're thinking of you and trying to help you out too. It's so, if you go to my mommy and me, I have so many playlists on so many categories. It's ridiculous. Like people are really out here helping each other and they don't even know it. So I'm excited that I finished that. And I ordered my I actually ordered the car. Now, I don't. I didn't make any of those pictures, so <clears throat> I can't sell them. That's definitely copyright infringement. You know, it's not that serious. I love the pictures. I'm going to use it for self-purposes. I'm going to share it on YouTube. It's not monetized. You know, sharing is caring. That's what I'm at right now. Um, but I want to be able to, you know, make my own in the future. So we'll see where that goes. But I'm so excited. I ordered the cards. I got an email like your cards are on your way. I ordered my best friend's card. So her cards are on the way. I'm just so freaking excited. Like, yes. Because um, my Oracle cards are in storage. So I haven't been able to pull my cards. But the messages have still been coming. So divination happens everywhere. Colors, animals, numbers, blah, blah, blah. You gonna get your message, don't worry. Um, so let's see. If you click on the link, you'll be able to see. Oh, so I didn't put the baby dust link on here yet because I'm still editing it. And whenever that's done, that'll be on whatever podcast. But on today's podcast, I put a link to the Daily Seven Plus Self Care Planner. Y'all, they had us with planners, elementary, middle school, high school. I don't know why I got out in this big wide world and and did not bring a planner. I don't know how I made it this far (laughs) without a planner. But I was just like, oh my God, let me get a planner. And I've just been able to keep up with things. And it's so funny. Like my mom, Lord bless her heart. She always be like, here go a planner, here go a planner, here go a planner, here go a calendar, here go a planner. And I just be like, okay, you know, thanks. But here I am finally using it. And I actually like it. Like, she gave me one. It has scriptures in it. It shows the month and all. And I'll just write my task, what I want to do. If I finish it that week, great. If not, I'll move it to the next week. And it's like, I never can forget because I look at it all the time. And it's like, you know, you check it off and you move on, you know, to the next thing. So, with my mind and how airy I be, it's best that I have, you know, something like a planner to ground me and to help me, um, you know, just focus on my goals more directly. So, I was like, oh my God, I put the planner together. Um, I have prayers in there, affirmation, it's a yoga chart, gratitude, a water chart, meal chart, meditation. It's just a little something I put together now. Between 101 um, planners and Canva, that's where the artwork and stuff came from. And between Pinterest and 101 planners, that's, um, no, Pinterest had some stuff on it, but um, who was it? <sighs> Between Pinterest and Telegram, that's where I got like the prayers and stuff like that. For like, I literally have um, that's what it is. Let me add that right now before I forget. I want another book full of prayers. Y'all, I'm gonna hand down so much stuff to my kids. They can be like, oh my god, mom is passing down something else. So, yeah, I hope you guys um, enjoy it. You know, you got your monthly planner on there. And then you got your prayers, your affirmation, and your self-care. You got your workout tracker. 
This one is more for the ladies because it has a menstrual calendar. I don't think guys want to see that. It talks about the moon phases, the moons of the year, the cycles of the moon so that you can connect them with your cycle and start to manifest. There's prayers in there. And you know what has been calling out to me? Hope you know. Hope I'm saying that right. Ho, a, po, no, po, no. This is Hawaiian. Um, there's a prayer that they say, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. And there's a company that you could buy little stickers to put on on your water because water absorbs energy and frequencies from words, believe it or not. And um, you you guys have seen this the studies with the rice, with the plants, with the frozen water, with Dr. Emoto. We are, you know, mostly water. So if you yell at a kid, that's why they're crying. Not, you know, because they can feel that energy, not necessarily the words. It's the energy that was in the words. But I remember one of the things that they were selling or one of the, because you buy like a sticker set and on that sticker set, let's say it's happiness. So it's different words about happiness and you put them on your mug or your jug or your water bottle or your cup and so when you pour your water in there it activates and charges well one of them was this i love you i'm sorry please forgive me thank you and i didn't know what that was so it's just so interesting that it came back around full circle and on the 101 planners they give a whole page about it um so yeah there's different prayers in there let's see and then I have my week one, week two, week three, week four. And yeah, just go from there. So I'm going to do it for the whole month of March. I'm going to see, you know, what I can add, what I need to take away. It's not a journal. My journal, you know, I have to use the 110 pages for my journal because I write so much. This is more of a planner. But eventually, I want to put journals together and planners together. Maybe a journal planner combo. Who knows? But writing basically is where <laughs> where life is going to take me. I just can't run from it anymore. It just, you know, it just is what it is. So shameless plug, that is my business reco for this particular um, podcast. So click on the link, share it with somebody. It's free. So next up, we have our video reco, which are eight signs that you don't trust yourself by psych to go So I'm going to let you hear this really quick and I'll be right back. Let's begin. Do you struggle with sabotaging feelings of self-doubt? Do you feel that this has ruined your chances for happiness or success? Are you worried that you're doing this to yourself? Trust is when we have a firm belief in the truthfulness, strength, and ability of someone or something. Learning how to trust yourself is the key to creating a healthy relationship with yourself as it fosters a deeper sense of self-love, self-compassion, and self-confidence within you. But maybe self-trust doesn't come so easily to you. So how can you tell if you lack self-trust? Here are eight signs that you struggle to trust yourself. Number one, you always second guess yourself. You have a hard time making decisions no matter how small they might be. You often find yourself wavering between choices for long periods of time, unable to make up your own mind. Being indecisive and constantly second guessing yourself shows that you're struggling to trust your own judgment. Indecision absolutely paralyzes you because the possibility of making a mistake fills you with fear. You feel overwhelmed when you have too much freedom because you lack the confidence to stand by your decisions. Number two, you overthink everything. Once you finally do make up your mind, you immediately start wondering if you made the right choice. And more often than not, you start seeing all the reasons why you should have gone with the other option instead. Anxiety, guilt, and regret follows behind everything that you do. You overthink all your choices and behaviors because you don't have enough faith in yourself to believe you can do well and succeed. You're so convinced that you'll wind up making some kind of mistake that it makes you hesitant, timid, and unsure of yourself. Three, you trust other people's opinions more than your own. Do you value the opinions of your friends and family over your own? 
Are you easily swayed by their opinions? Then can't make a decision without asking for their input first. Say for example, you want to buy something you've had your eye on forever, but because your friends tell you they don't like it, you change your mind. You're easily discouraged from your own desires and prone to pleasing others because the truth is, you trust everyone else more than you trust yourself. Number four, you don't validate your own experiences. Are you forgetful or do you easily get confused? You often find yourself feeling like you've left something behind or forgotten to do something important. If this sounds like you, it may not be because of absent-mindedness, but because you don't trust yourself enough to validate your own experiences. Whenever you think to yourself, I'm sure that I left it here, or I swear I remembered to do that already, you soon start to wonder if it's actually true. You often find yourself wondering if things are the way you remember them, because you have this unshakable feeling that you've done something wrong or made a mistake somehow. Number five, you're afraid to speak up. Do you struggle to make your voice known, even when you're with a group of close friends? You back away from being the center of attention. Studies show that when you have a tendency to be shy and quiet, you most likely also have a hard time trusting yourself. And this is what makes you so afraid to speak up. You're afraid of being judged or ridiculed if you truly speak your mind. You don't like to share your opinions, thoughts, and feelings, especially when it will contradict those around you because you lack the conviction, assertiveness, and self-confidence in yourself. Number six, you try to control everything. Has anyone ever told you that you're too bossy or controlling? You often find yourself taking charge of things and planning ahead for just about everything. Another common way a lack of self-trust can manifest in our behaviors is through a strong need for control. You try to control everything around you and feel upset when things don't go the way you expected them to. This is most likely because you don't trust yourself enough to handle the curveballs life throws your way. Number seven, you struggle to recognize your worth. When you have problems trusting and believing in yourself, you undermine your own success and belittle your own accomplishments. And you struggle to see all the great qualities you have and contributions you've made because you fail to recognize your own self-worth. You feel embarrassed when people compliment you because you don't feel deserving of their praise. So no matter how much reassurance and encouragement people may give you, you still keep selling yourself short time and time again. And number eight, you're overly critical with yourself. Are you overly harsh, demanding, and critical of yourself? This behavior is a definite red flag and indicator that you need to work on your own self-trust. Every time you make a mistake, no matter how small, you're always the first to point it out because you're your own worst critic. You beat yourself up over your shortcomings and find it hard to forgive yourself for the things you've done wrong. You dwell on your past mistakes and often find yourself grappling with self-doubt because you don't trust yourself enough to be more understanding of your own flaws and weaknesses. Just like with self-love and self-compassion, it takes time to cultivate a healthy sense of self-trust within ourselves. Self-trust is the ability to believe in ourselves in spite of our mistakes forgive ourselves for our past failures, and still have hope that we are strong enough to overcome the problems we may face. If you've never heard of psych to go before, please go check them out. They talk about so many topics. They're short, they're right to the point. There's cute little cartoons that match. And I just, I just thought out about them sometime the end of last year. Um, who was I listening to? Cooley and the Queen. They was doing like hood news and he would pull it up. And I was like, mm, that was so interesting. And, and now I'm, you know, subscribed to the page and I just, just, again, wealth of information on there. One thing about trust, and I don't want to get too much into it because we're still going on, on the records, was I would always look externally like, okay, I can trust this person. I can't trust that person. Da, 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 da. What I didn't realize was that the self-trust that I have for myself is the self-trust that I would reflect on others. And that was a major eye-opener for me. And I even just had a reading with Sharita. I swear, I'm going to be understanding some of the messages. They just go right over my head. And she was like, you need to build self-confidence. 
And I'm like, self-confidence, I know I look good. Ain't nobody worrying about that. You know, however I want to look, I can look. If it's a chill day, it's a chill day. If I want to be a bad bitch, I'm going to be a bad bitch. Um, I even went so far, like, I can even take nude pictures. Like, you know, there's nothing I can't do. So I'm like, what does she mean by confidence? In the spiritual aspect, self-confidence basically is the, the trust that you have within yourself. Um... And that can relate to if someone is going to, if we're going to go get something to eat, somebody asks me, what do you want to eat? I'm like, I don't know. What do you want? Just like not being able to make decisions like that, like all of it ties in, back into self-trust. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. Like I just, it's like learning yourself and, you know, erasing things and, and reprogramming. It's just like, oh my, this is a full-time job. Being in everybody else's business, absolutely not. Yourself. <laughs> you probably will need multiple lifetimes to to master yourself. So that means you really don't have no time to be in nobody else's business but your own. I'm just saying. And I just realized that too. Like, oh my God. Me. This whole life is about M to the E. But, um... Yeah, so eight signs that you don't trust yourself. I also am a part of the Forbidden Knowledge TV app. Go check them out. Um, and on there, this is how Universe talked to me. Now, I will write down. Things will come to me like, okay, and I do it for me. What is self-trust? Da, 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 to build myself up. And then it just kind of turns into a podcast. But it comes to me in so many different ways. So I'm on for being in knowledge TV and guess what's on there? Trust. This wonderful young lady, Anaya uh, Sari, I think she's the conscious princess. She did a poem on trust. And I think I'm going to start doing that in the future where I, I've decided that I want to do free things and I want to do paid things. So I'm going to offer free things because there has been so many times where I didn't have it either. And again, I just appreciate for the free and then I'm going to do cost things. So I am a Libra, which explains <laughs> I'm always going to be balanced, but I'm going to put some things on YouTube and then some things are going to be for sale on Amazon and stuff like that. But and in my store revamp coming soon, but music to me it's more than music it's magical I don't know music just music just does something I'm already an empath I'm already extra sensitive so maybe I can just be, read into the music a little bit more but if she just read that poem it would be so much different from when the music in the background it felt like her words and the music made it and had a baby the best way I can explain it <laughs> it's so magical but um out of her whole poem, Spirit was telling me, trust in the divine timing. So even with me being impatient, because I am extremely impatient, um, I'm not really trusting in the divine timing itself. I'm not trusting in divine and I'm not trusting in myself. So it's like, if you can't... It, if you can't even give trust, you know what I mean? Then how can you receive trust? It's like, it's like a double whammy. I was like, oh my God. So I have to just understand that, you know, trust the divine timing. I'm right where I'm supposed to be, you know, yada, 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 yada. And it's just so, it's so funny. Somebody else just told me that like, oh my God, that is crazy. Um, so yeah, go check out Anaya, sorry, the conscious princess. I think that's really cute too. Um, so then I have a podcast record. I just discovered Miss Gabby. So her podcast is called Dear Gabby. It's amazing. Um, she, she, she reminds me of, uh, Delilah. How Delilah, I used to work at Rainbow, my first clothing store job. I've always loved clothes and shopping, which is an addiction, by the way. But, um... Delilah used to always have her callers come in or she would read letters and just give advice. And it was just live, live, live. She reminds me of uh, Delilah, but she's more spiritual. So people call in, she gives them spiritual advice. You know, she's 
she's she could be soft and sweet and hard to the core you know however you need it she can give it to you and i just think that's so amazing because it's like everybody's out here hurting or, or wanting to grow or needing healing and it's just like you have those fairies sprinkled everywhere doing what they're supposed to be doing and you know she crossed my path so i'm gonna be learning from miss dear gabby so i have a little clip from her podcast check her out i'm pretty sure she's everywhere podcast podcasts are and on this particular podcast she was talking about control which it's linking back so how you you can't control everything again that's a lack of trust so i'll be right back after this clip all got stuff that is up that keeps coming up and what we can do together in this community is open up to the creative possibilities for growth and change so anyone that's watching or listening that's in this same place of feeling unworthy the best step is to say this prayer with me right now i pray for creative possibilities for growth healing and worthiness and when you say that prayer, I pray for creative possibilities for growth, healing, and worthiness. What's happening is you're telling the universe, I'm ready to change and I welcome help. And when we open up that invitation, we actually awaken our consciousness to start to pay closer attention to the support systems that are around us, to the possibilities for greater growth and change. And those support systems come in many forms. So it might be a therapist, it might be a yoga teacher, it might be a book, it might be a, this episode of Dear Gabby, it might be that you are some one day led to another episode of Dear Gabby and all the different ways that we can receive new information. But I want you to open up to it and I want you to pray for it right now. And then I want you to show up when it comes to you. So I love how Dear Gabby mentioned to pray as... Um to me, trust is like an invitation, um, inviting the powers that be, the angels, the gods, your ancestors to offer that assistance. So, you know, not by, by not offering them that invitation, it's like they can't help. It's like you're asking for a help, but you didn't give them permission to help. So what I learned with my body graph chart is that I love to share information. <laughs> but if I give it to people that aren't open to receiving it, it's almost like throwing pearls at swine. And then it makes me feel all different kinds of way, X, Y, Z. But I, most importantly, I exerted that energy and that information to the wrong vessel. It wasn't received. And it was almost in vain. And with important information and knowledge and energy like that, you want to make sure that it hits the hits the target, hits the mark. Um, so when I hear that word invitation, like that's my green light. So trust is like a green light to the universe to hey, you know, I give you permission to open those doors and you know, help me meet this goal, um, you know, God, deities, angels, higher benevolent beings, and giving the green light to myself, like, hey, self, you know, I, I trust you, you know, we may have done X, Y, Z in the past, but we've learned, and we're going to move forward and make better choices, and it's okay, I don't condemn you, I trust you, I forgive you, it's okay, so trust is major, and that trust that I have for myself is exerted to those around me. And if people are a reflection of you, then perhaps the trust you don't get is just a reflection of the trust that you don't have for yourself. Let me into the story. You know I love a story only when you're the author. Trying to meet you at the altar Working on being softer Ooh Cause you are a dream to me
that was my girl Kalani. You already know that's Bay. She got a new song out called Little Story. And I just love. Let me tell you, when you get a chance, go listen to that song. There is a difference in music. I feel, I don't know if it's just me. I feel that music. It's alive. I don't even know. Maybe it's the empath, the extra sensitive part of me. It is alive. I feel it. I could cry. I could smell. That they don't make music like that no more. It's alive. She's not the only one that um has music like that. Who else? Um what's my girl name? I gotta find her. Oh, hold on, wait a minute. I gotta find it. Hold on, wait a minute. Which one am I under? I'm on the right one. <sighs> mm. I think I'm on the wrong one. It's Kilani and come on, Spirit. What's the other girl's name? I feel like I looked at the video today, so it should come up. But I got so many damn pages. Kalani Little Story and Kilani and what is her name? I know it's called um, She sang a song called Jaguar Victoria Monet Thank you, good lord So Victoria Monet Got a new Video out Called Nothing Feels Better I didn't tag it with her and her little baby It's just so cute how they both have their little babies and now, um, one of her songs, let me see if I can find the name. That one had me, like, gone. Um, what is that song? Moment. Victoria Mo Monet. Moment. Those songs, like, take me to outer space. So, I don't know if her and Kilani got the same producers, but that type of music with the piano and the instruments, and it's not just digital it's real people playing real instruments with real energy going through the speakers and it's alive like i feel it i don't know i feel like they work with the same person but yeah so shout out to uh kilani i feel like um they're using the same producers because the mucus music is starting to sound the same and i really love like kilani got this whole spirituality thing going on she got a song called altar i'm like yes do you see the divine feminine is working its way through all of the females like it's crowning season ladies um but let's see uh so spiritual teacher mentor guide and reco would be tia swan tia swan has been in the game for a minute okay um she has a youtube video on how to trust yourself i'm gonna let you listen to a little clip on that but what i want to say is i've been hearing a lot of different things about what this life is what afterlife is yada 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 and i've come to the agreement that we do live multiple lives because we're we're energy and we never die so what what the fuck else are we gonna do but keep living right and um some of the people that come back have lived so much they they do have the higher mathematics you know knowledge because they've been here so fucking long or you know they do have the manifestations to manifest billions of dollars bitch because they've been doing this shit for so long it's like just because you're a human and you're a certain age, your soul is a completely different age. It's almost like when you play VR, 
when you play VR, I can make a character and make it look old. But I'm young as hell over here playing with that old ass avatar. I kind of feel like that's how life is. Like, when I sit down to play The Sims, I'm like, bitch, we in motherfucking big ass reality ass sims and then we sit at a computer and play fucking sims and then we put our sims at the computer and they play fucking sims like this shit never ends it's just so ironic but when i when i made my list of masters and teachers and such and such and such they're human spirit souls just like us they've just been around the block a few more times and they you know just like the old heads they have wisdom to impart keys to pass out jewels etc so uh, Tia Swan is definitely one of them. I've added her to my list, and I'm going to let you listen to her clip on how to trust yourself. We cannot say that they're against you. They just don't agree with the rest of you about how to be for you. For example, consciously, you may want a relationship to work. I mean, really, really bad. But every time you get into a relationship, there's a part of you that starts pushing the other person away, acting nasty, isolating itself, and you're like, oh my god, I don't trust myself. I don't understand what's going on. This part of me is against me. It actually isn't. Maybe that part was the part that was there for all the painful relationships you had before. Maybe that part of you knows already that relationships mean abandonment. So it pushes everyone away first so that it doesn't ever have to go through that pain of abandonment again. And guess what? It's doing all of that for you, not against you. It is just an inverted advocate. No part of you, even the parts that actually hate you, are in fact against you. I thought that was interesting that she was saying even the parts that hate you, you know, they in fact don't hate you. <clears throat> because it's like your body really does keep track of everything that you're doing, you know, this happened this time and this happened this time and this like it's trapped, you know. It, learn, it learns how to react to certain situations. So it's really just trying to protect you from yourself, really. <laughs> Isn't that sad? Oh, my God. So just think of... Um, I'm going to give an example. When I was really young, like second grade, as I've always wore glasses, you know, the boys would play basketball on the court. And I got hit first time. My glasses fell off. So I remember in middle school, the same thing happened. So now, like, if a ball comes, I'm, like, you know, just flinching and get my glasses because it's, like, my body It's like, okay, there's a ball. You and these glasses, we, like, we already know what's going to happen. So it kind of kind of predicts or, or kind of tried to protect you from things happening again. So to me, I think that's where self-trust will come into play by, you know, taking the time to examine what has happened, what can you do to prevent it from happening again so that your body can, you know, trust that you, you know, are not constantly self-sabotaging. That is so sad. And uh, does all these weird things to, to try to protect you from yourself. I thought that was pretty interesting. Um... So, yeah, check out Miss Teal Swan. Then I want to do a book reco for Destiny of the Souls by Michael Newton. So, I already finished Journey of the Souls Part 1 and 2 on YouTube. I'm on Destiny of the Souls now. And I just wanted to let you guys hear a clip. Like, I, I am so fascinated by this past life regression. Like, I'm really going to get me a past life regression. And you know what? I feel like we can do this on our own, but... You know how society is. They go learn something and do it for you, maybe to make sure you do it the right way or that you don't get harmed. But I really feel like we should know a lot of this stuff on our own. But I remember with an ex, I would be asleep and I'd be waking up like talking. Like we, like what was we talking about? Like I catch myself talking, and I remember one time he was trying to record me, so I know there's a stage where I am sleep like knocked out don't know what's going on not talking there's a stage where I'm semi-sleep where my body has shut down but for some reason this mouth is running 
And there's a section where I'm just laying down, like, sometimes on my break, I'll just get in the bed and lay down just to, like, rest my eyes. Like, I still can hear everything. You know, I can move if I need to, but I'm literally, like, just trying to rest my eyes. And it's so funny that I say that because doing my journal one day, the beta waves popped up. So... I'll go over them on another podcast, but spirit had led me to the dang on beta waves. So now I got to, you know, let my beta waves play. Well, let me see if I could go over it now. Let's see. Beta waves, beta waves, beta waves. So that, that oh, I'm, I'm way back. I had one that far back. Is that the front? I had my back. So I can talk about what I had journal about for self-trust. But these betas, honey. Or sir. Okay, so check this out. It's called Binarial Beats. The delta pattern is 0.5 to 4 hertz. It's a dream like sleep. It gives you a deeper stage of sleep if you play that frequency. The theta pattern is 4 hertz to 7 hertz. It gives you improved meditation, creativity, sleep, and the rapid eye movement phase. I know I always would hear round, but I didn't know what round was. Rapid eye movement phase. The alpha pattern is 7 to 13 hertz for relaxation. The beta pattern is 13 to 30 hertz for concentration on the low end but anxiety on the high end and the gamma pattern is 30 to 50 hertz which is maintenance of arousal while the person is awake so you know how i said i'm an extremely sensitive person and i am empathic when i look at movies i hear every little tiny sound in the background and it don't just be music playing. It be frequencies, yo. For example, when it's scary, like, all the hair is standing up on me. Like, they really be doing these frequency things. Or when it's an action movie, my heart is racing. It's not because they're fighting. It's not because I'm looking at someone fighting on the screen. It's not because rap music is playing. They be putting these frequencies. So, you got the image. You got the music and you got the frequency. It ain't no telling what else. It's like, okay, spirit's trying to, again, getting me to strengthen my mind, which means they're playing a lot of mind games. But that could be another podcast. But I stumbled across, i tell you the guy's name. What was his name? Um, actually, I have him in my folders. Let me just tell him, because you can go to his YouTube and you can listen to the beats for yourself. So, let's see. I mean, this mentor list is getting pretty long. And I'm excited to put that out there. Like, I want to do, like, a conscious mentor. Man, I see all these little books about to be born. So, his name was... Jody Hatton, binarial, jodyhatton.gumroad.com. That's the one that you pay. He saves $59, but he allow any type of donation. And then his YouTube, um, the deepest healing sleep, 3.2 hertz delta. But his name, again, is Jody Hatton. So... Jody is the frequency plug. And to be honest with you guys, when you sing, your body vibrates. I was singing in the choir as a little girl. So we could do these frequencies on our own. We don't need TV, iPods, blah, blah, blah. We could do it on our own with our voice, with our tongue, with our mouth. Maybe with instruments, sound bowls, and stuff. We just don't. We just don't. So... So yeah, I thought that was interesting. So let me get back to 
Destiny of the Souls. I'm gonna let you hear a little clip of Destiny of the Souls and I will come back. Dr. N, aside from her teaching techniques, are you fond of Idis in terms of her identity? Subject, yes. I just wish she would agree to come with me once. Dr. N, oh, you would like to actually have an Earth incarnation with her? Subject, grins mischievously. I have told her we might relate better here if she would consent to come to Earth sometime and mate with me. Dr. N. And what does Ida say to that suggestion? Subject. She laughs and says she will think about it, if I can prove to her that it would be productive. At this juncture, I ask Nentham how long Ida has been associated with him, and learn she was assigned these three entities when they moved into Level 3. Nentham, Raoul, and Senji are also under the tutelage of a beloved older master guide who has been with them since the beginning of their existence. It would be inaccurate to assume that more advanced spirits lead lonely spiritual lives. This subject told me he was in contact with many souls. Raoul and Senji were simply his closest friends. Level 3 and 4 are significant stages for souls in their development, because now they are given increased responsibilities for younger souls. The status of a guide is not given to us all at once, however. As with many other aspects of soul life, we are carefully tested. The intermediate levels are trial periods for potential teachers. While our aura is still yellow, our mentors assign us a soul to look after, and then evaluate our leadership performance both in and out of physical incarnations. Only if this preliminary training is successful are we allowed to function even at the level of a junior guide. Not everyone is suited for teaching, but this does not keep us from becoming an advanced soul in the blue section. Guides, like everyone else, have different abilities and talents, as well as shortcomings. By the time we reach level five, our soul aptitudes are well known in the spirit world. We are given occupational duties commensurate with our abilities, which I will go into later in this chapter. But I am in, so in love with this book, with this whole past life regression, with with reincarnation, with the game is life and different. It really, the Bible is really starting to make sense now. When Revelation talk about all these creatures and da, 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 like everything isn't human. Like creation is so many different things from the micro to the macro. And it just makes so much more sense. You you just have the Bible talking about humans and all of a sudden there's horses in the sky and, um, you know, beings with thousands of eyes and stuff. And it's just like, what the fuck? Can I get a crash course? So hearing about these past life regressions is it really makes me think, like Miss Sharita, my God, was saying, as above, so below, as within, so without. If we have janitors and cooks and servers and customer service and accountants and team leads and managers and supervisors and district managers and you know, treasury and board of directors and CEO and, you know, if we have all of that here up to who knows who is running it all, but if we have that pyramid here, that tiny ass pyramid, just imagine creation's pyramid, like, the fuck? So we have a life, there's angels watching over us. There's someone watching them and someone watching them and someone watching them. Like, we all are really learning and growing and being the best we could be. You're just trying to master this human life right now. And then you'll be able to come back and you'll be watching three humans. And then you'll be able to come back and you'll be watching five humans. And then you'll be come back and you'll be watching team leads that are watching their human and helping them guide their humans. And it just keeps going and going and going and going. Evolution. Period. That's life. The evolution of all. Period. Um, so yeah, check out Destiny of the Souls by Michael Newton. I also added a new Pinterest board. What was it? What did I name it? Oh, that's pretty. Iridescent always catches my eye. I feel like my soul is iridescent. 
or my planet is iridescent. Like it just reminds me of home, something with iridescent. But let me see, what did I name? What did I name? What did I name? Let me see what I named it. I named it, was it space? Outer space images. And I've just been fascinated with outer space images for whatever reason. And they're always colorful. So just like the chakras, like something with these colors and different gases that explode and they make different colors. It's just so like, I don't know, Lord, you trying to tell me about the astral travel? I just have pictures and pictures and pictures of, of, of gases and, and gallus galaxy and cosmic pictures and i don't know they're just so captivating okay yeah but check out the book Rico by michael newton destiny of the souls i think it's so amazing there's so many past regression uh teachers on youtube even locally where you can go get one done and it just it just opens your mind to a whole nother perspective of this thing called life like they literally will box us in to this tiny ass box when life is unboxable Ugh. so yeah y'all know me. if you know me that's my motto unboxable don't put me in any box period um but this one is kind of long so you know how we knew we we're gonna come back with uh part two and we're gonna continue with the self-trust catch you on the next episode bye thanks a million for listening there's a million podcasts in the world you click on this one little on this one to hear what i have to say i hope universe has a special message for you you can reach me on linktree at forward slash love dot i hope you have a better than a great day love you talk to you later For hope? How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. And yet, I'm one of the lucky ones. People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction. And all you can talk about is the money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you?